What up YouTube, it's your boy Uncle Ty here. Before we get into the video, please make sure you click like and subscribe. Make sure you follow all the social medias at the bottom. Donate it if you like. Today we're going to get right into this one, man. Ten times we knew that Diddy was guilty. Ten times, that's right. Ten times we knew Diddy was guilty. And look, man, I'm not one to pass judgment on any black man, you know, uh, prematurely. But uh, let's be honest, man. A lot of the evidence against the man is real heavy right now. And it's, it's going to be real hard for him to get out of this one. And, um, you know, God bless him. Whatever works for him, you know. Hopefully it works out. But look, we're going to go ahead and get into the video. Ten times we knew uh, Diddy was guilty. Let's get right into it. We know sometimes those relationships get ugly, you know, and sometimes it doesn't come out into the forefront the way this one has come out. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're rewinding several interviews that... Yeah, I forgot all about Colin, man. Uh, he was one of the uh, more funny uh, talk show guys I used to watch on the late night. Retroactively left us asking, what did Diddy say? Ain't that the same jersey uh, Diddy had on in that, uh, the, uh, that New York video with JD and Ludacris and all them? You're going to hear about my party. They're going to be shutting them down. They're going to probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we want to have a good time. Wow. Representing the Wendy Williams Show. After Hot 97 fired Wendy Williams in 1998, she accused Sean P. Diddy Combs of using his money. Yo, shout out to Wendy Williams, man. I know she's going through a lot of things health-wise. ...and influence to, quote, try to crush her in New York. Almost two decades after their beef started, Williams... Yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo. Wendy was kind of stacked back and in... To quote, I mean, to she ain't really have it down York. bottom, but... Almost look at that, yo. She was kind of stacked for her. I ain't gonna lie. Whatever age this was, I ain't gonna lie. I'd have went at it. Almost two decades after their beef started, Williams welcomed like Diddy onto her though. talk show, seemingly on good terms. I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle yes. moment. Bro, he gave another that death stare. Everybody, yes. get into yeah. adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Is full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. While Diddy presents himself as someone who's matured into a role model, several moments are now traced with irony. Williams inquires about Diddy's lifestyle and the people he surrounds himself with, asking if they, quote, violate him. She meant financially, but her phrasing proved prognostic. You threw a house party and I got the <laughs> footage, okay? Look at this. Now, who has this many people at their house? Puff yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo. Puffy parties, like, you know, I don't know what it is he doing on the dark side, but, like, the good side of the parties, the parties are like they fun. Like, I ain't gonna lie. If I was an artist back in the day, I'd probably been going to Diddy parties. Now, all the other stuff, nah. And I, or, Sean, Diddy, you do these, what do I call you? Yo, why he giving her that death stare like that? Yo, he's giving her, like, the whole, like, the whole stance, like, yo, wrong question, and your life is on the line. <laughs> Diddy later discusses setting a positive example for African-American males and his charter school capital prep. Diddy's partnership with the school unsurprisingly ended in November 2023. A sexual assault accusation surfaced. Our children are expected not just to learn to read, write, and compute, but to use that which they've learned to improve their community. Did they get into Defending the countdown Justin yet? Bieber, Access Hollywood. The allegations against Diddy have made people reassess his relationship with several young protégés. That's kind of weird, though. Like, the whole friendship with Justin Bieber. Like, I understand you're a record exec, but, yo, you was a little too close to to, to, to to that little dude, man. Like, the whole spending weekends with him. What's that for? Like, if it ain't no studio involved, if it ain't no work being done, no studio involved, no music videos being shot, why are you with a little kid for the extended amount of time that, like they said, he was with Justin Bieber and Usher? Let me know down in the comments. Why would a grown man want to spend that much time with a kid that's not his own? Especially when you got as many kids as Diddy got. Including Justin Bieber. Diddy's 48 hours with Bieber in particular isn't... See what I'm saying? 48 hours with with a kid? Like... It's as cool as it seemed in 2009. Where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose. But um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Although Diddy is in trouble with the law now, the positions were reversed in 2014 when Bieber got arrested for a DUI. Diddy defended Bieber in an access... Yeah, he got the super glassy eyes. Like, he had a real good night. ...Hollywood interview. He acknowledged that the pop star had made mistakes, but Diddy vowed to help him stay, quote, on the right track. Well, I, I, I don't think that he um, 
should should be judged like he's not a human being or he's not a teenager that has to take some stumbling blocks. You know what I'm saying? It's just not fair to, to make him a perfect human being. That's I don't care what you say about Diddy. No, no matter what they say he, he does in the dark, like, the energy he puts out in the world has always been positive. Like, so it's like... Like I say, it, I'm not, you know, I'm not defending the man at all. I'm not telling you I'm 50-50 on him or nothing. But what I'm saying is just to what he gives to the naked eye, out to the youth and the public, has always been like a positive uh, outlook on life. You know what I mean? And I don't know. It's just crazy to know that some of the stuff that he's being accused of, you know, could be something that, he, that he's really, you know, doing. But, hey, you know. You know, like my mother said, you know, you, you never know what a person's doing behind closed doors. Forward almost a decade, Bieber's arrest feels innocent compared to Combs's. Bieber wasn't as quick to rush to Diddy's defense. A source claims that Bieber doesn't want to focus on Diddy's scandal, instead dedicating his time to being, quote, a great dad and husband. Does he want to have, you know, any affiliation with any of this? No. Yeah, what but I Bieber think have that him? even for him... Where he is in his life right now, I think it is a smart thing for him to just not even get involved in anything. Keep JLo's name out your mouth. Jimmy Kimmel Live. In late 2023, shortly before Cassie Ventura filed her lawsuit against Diddy, the rapper sat down with Jimmy Kimmel. The host asked about a rumor circulating amid the release of Jada Pinkett Smith's memoir, Worthy. According to somebody claiming to be Diddy's former security. Yo, Jada is so fine right there, bro. Like, yo, when I was a teenager, yo, I had the teenager, preteen, I had the biggest crush on Jada around that different world stage to like Low Down Dirty Shame. Uh, what was that other movie? Jason's Lurk that she was in, you know, that movie she was in. Yo, she was bad, bro. And, you know, like, I ain't, I ain't throwing no shots at it because women get older, you know what I mean? Things gonna happen. But, um, yeah, in our prime, psh, she was 1A. Pretty guard. Will and Jada wanted to have a threesome with Jennifer Lopez. Did he Let me know down in the comments, who looked better in that, in that picture right there, J-Lo or, uh, or Jada? He was dating Lopez at the time, allegedly threatening to beat up Will Smith. Hearing Kimmel relay this tale, Diddy initially responded with a stone-cold stare. He quickly changed his tune, laughing it off and denying such gossip. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, I thought we was friends. What is this? Jimmy was wild for asking that, though. Jimmy probably definitely got checked after the show for, uh, for saying that. He probably, I would have checked him for sure. Like, if you know I probably did something that could, like, potentially cause... Uh, a criminal case? Why would you ask me that on national TV like that? Whether or not this story is completely fabricated. But they just go to show you, like, the media don't care at the end of the day. As long as they get their ratings, that's all they care about. Like, whatever the outcome is, you know, that's on you. And it's also on you as a, as a black man or as a man, period, or as a human being to just do right in life so that type of stuff don't, doesn't even happen to you, you know what I mean? It's far from the most shocking thing Diddy has been accused of. It isn't the most bonkers story involving Will and Jada either. No, I it's all about not, love, though. That's no, not true. You, you really heard that? No. What? Yeah, yeah. Hands to yourself, Diddy. The Keenan Ivory Wayans show. In the past, if you had P. Diddy and Mike Tyson in the same room, chances are we'd be more intimidated by the heavyweight champ. Yo, then Mike looked real uncomfortable right there. Like out of all people, Mike Tyson. You gotta be a wild boy for Mike Tyson to feel uncomfortable around you. Bien. Now we'd be more concerned for Tyson's well-being. In 1998, the two appeared on Keenan Ivory Wayans' short-lived talk show. If you're curious about the pairing, the boxer wanted to start a music company. People's been helping me out. Um, Wycliffe's been helping me out. Devontae Swain's been helping me out. And hopefully Puffy helped me out, you know. <laughs> While much of the interview feels casual, a blink and you'll miss it dose of awkwardness occurs as Diddy's hand gets a little too close to Tyson. Wearing a grin, Tyson removes Diddy's hand before scooching away. But it was like, I, I just felt, I was embarrassed for like weeks. You know, yeah, but it, it, it truly is about the Benjamin, yeah. as we see. Oh, yes, he's he literally. It's he about the Benjamin. Yo, what's up with Diddy, yo? Like, on national TV, in between two black men, yo, you put your hands on one. Like, yo, you know, in, in this case, they say it's a lot of drug use involved. This might be one of them days where, he, you know, he was messed up off of whatever he was messed up off of. 
Perhaps we're reading too much into this gesture, but to say that Diddy has been accused of invading personal space would be an understatement. Watching this makes us almost as uncomfortable. You do got that high jaw, you know what I mean? Like when you see somebody that's off something. Why are you talking? Oh, Les Tyson. Oh, what are we doing, man? Let's talk about this guy. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about Puff. 73 questions with Sean Diddy Combs. Vogue. Vogue's 73 question series allows viewers to connect with celebrities on a more personal level. Admittedly, a lot of these interviews are presented through a rose-tinted lens. Nowhere is that. Bro, he lived a lavish life, bro. Like, if it's really all over for him, as far as being a free man, this has got to be like the greatest fall of all time, bro. It's got to be like the, gr the greatest fall of all time. This Look at the house, man. And that's probably like his seventh, eighth house that he's probably got somewhere. That more apparent than in Diddy's interview. Love, how do you describe yourself? Uh, I'm vivacious, eccentric, and I'm a Scorpio. In 2017, the video presents Diddy in a down-to-earth light. On the heels of his 2024 arrest, though, some of Diddy's responses feel like setups for punchlines that late-night hosts would have a field day with. Now, you've gone on the record saying that your white party is up there with the top three that you've ever thrown for people. What are the other two? I would say when I got my star on Hollywood, I had a party, and this year at Burning Man at an undisclosed location. To name a few, Diddy describes himself as, quote, eccentric, says that there are, quote, That's a wild guy, man. That's a wild guy. Quote, no misconceptions about him, and claims, quote, compassion is his best personal trait. Diddy also brings up love several times, even asking the interviewer to refer to him by that name. Oh, and his dream collaboration would be with Michael Jackson. Why? I mean, it's Mi Michael Jackson, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? The Prince. Look at the stuff they say Mike was doing. I mean, I, I don't know. Shoot, they probably would have been. They probably would have got along well. Princes and Puffy, the Graham Norton show. Many famous names have quote unquote party with Diddy over the years. I don't even remember who Graham Norton Not every Norton invitee is. showed up, however. In 2011, Graham Norton asked about a rumor that Diddy wanted Princes William and Harry to attend one of his parties. Oh, it's my, it's Diddy assured London Norton that they were no longer on the list. Not anymore. I mean, before, you know. <laughs> yeah, Don't you know, ruin our royal no, no, wedding yeah, for us. I know. <laughs> Trust me, they're off the list. This was seemingly because William was about to marry Catherine Middleton, but Diddy's clumsy word choice turned this clip into certified cringe. Diddy claimed that he wanted to party with the princes when they were, quote, young bucks growing up. I can just go over for some tea or something, and we can kick it. Since the princes had some... See what I'm saying? Why you want to hang with so many kids, yo? Like, why, bro? Thing ...of a reputation for getting into trouble. Diddy thought they'd, quote, want to hang out. Given what allegedly went down at numerous puffy parties, Diddy might have felt more at home with Prince Andrew. Going to... Um Jeffrey's was not about partying. Absolutely not. Any interviews with Cassie. Throughout their relationship, Diddy and Cassie Ventura accompanied each other to various... Their energy just... Look, look at that. Their energy just always looks so weird when they were together, bro. And I hear that she did the whole swoop overhead thing because he yanked her hair, hair out. They said that in, in, in a lawsuit. It's red carpet events. Even when flying solo, Diddy and Cassie would often speak adoringly of each other. Um, the birthday party was incredible. Um, you know, um, she's such a special person. On the surface, the two looked like the epitome of a glamorous couple. Do you like the devil, bro? That illusion was shattered when Cassie sued Combs for a, quote, cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking that allegedly lasted almost a decade. If I'm on her uh, team as her attorney, I'm making it clear that that's what... It's crazy she went through all that for, for, for 10 years. And I'm not saying that in a way like I don't believe her, but that, that's kind of crazy she went through that for 10 years. It happened here, that the relationship started out good, but gradually it got worse and worse to the point that she was caught in this vicious cycle. Uh, she was caught under his thumb. Some of Cassie's claims were supported by video evidence. After watching this footage, it's this impossible to look back on any of their interviews together the same way again. The most disheartening example may have been at the 2018 Met Gala, where Liza Koshy asked Cassie if there was anything she'd like to confess. I keep everything right here. There you go. Or right here. There you go. That's how you do it. Cassie wouldn't. Mm -mm -mm. That sound like words of a victim. Like she was telling us, like, everything I'm going through, I'm just going to keep here. 
in, in between here. To keep quiet much longer. Chris Brown, Rihanna, and Diddy 2, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Few could have predicted that P. Diddy and Ellen DeGeneres would both be problematic figures by 2024. Diddy dropped by DeGeneres' show multiple times. Puffy parties were a popular topic. Ellen even invited him to one of her parties. You know I have to arrive fashionably late. All right, not too late, though. Not too late? Not too late. But hey, did y'all see the whole story about Ellen DeGeneres and how, how mean she was to her uh, employees? Yo, I heard she was, like, wickedly mean, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can never judge a book by the cover. Because if you watch, if you ever watch the Ellen show, she like like one of the happiest white chicks in the world, bro. And she never, she never give off a, a, a racist vibe or none of that, man. She just, that's what I'm saying, bro. Yo, Hollywood's a weird place, so you never know what you're dealing with. Please. What time would you like me there? Um, I'll tell you later. Okay. But not okay. too late. Because, cause, you know, once you get there, the party really starts. In an especially unsettling interview from 2009, DeGeneres asked Diddy about Rihanna and Chris Brown, the latter of whom had been accused of domestic violence. Diddy reportedly lent Brown his Miami mansion, supposedly attempting to help reconcile his relationship with Rihanna. If I could be there as a friend during hard times, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be there as a friend. Right. But I don't know the exact particulars. I didn't get into it. I'm not going to do this or do that. It was a dark, it's a dark time for them, and I was there more as a support. Did he didn't? Did I have to remember how how he did uh how he did uh Cassie, and and make you like really think like that's probably why he answered it that way, because you know a lot of other guys they were they, you know a lot of other people they were firmly for Rihanna and against Chris in their response, but that it was like I give support to both of them, you know what I mean. That kind of showed us right there the kind of lifestyle he was probably living. Deny these claims, saying that he could lend his house to whoever he wanted. While Diddy condemned violence, he argued that stones shouldn't be thrown without all the facts. Unlike Diddy, Brown notably pleaded guilty to his assault charges. If I'm really honest with you, you know what I would do? I'm just take everything in life and show my consequences for my actions that have to be dealt with. Lock the door. And you got to give it to Chris. He didn't kind of like pretty much stay out of trouble, like other than, you know, the stuff that he, you know, he say, you know, they say he does uh, in his personal life as far as, you know, making himself feel good. But, you know, you got to give it to him. For the most part, Chris has never really been like a troublemaker. The guy would just be working a lot. First, late night with Conan O'Brien. Between Danny Masterson and P. Diddy, celebs should be careful what they tell Conan O'Brien. It may come back to haunt them years later. In Diddy's case, Conan spoke with the rapper in 2002. Now, what are you, you're legendary for the parties that you throw. Mm -hmm. You throw a great party. I'm a legend, baby, for a whole bunch of things. O'Brien wanted to learn the key to throwing a puffy party. Diddy provided a detailed list that included beautiful ladies, beautiful men, booze, water, and, quote, locks on the doors. Conan brought the interview to a brief halt, questioning if Diddy's parties were safe. No, no, I'm gonna say you notice something with all of these uh, Caucasian hosts he, he goes to see? They all ask him something incriminating to get on their show. They all make sure they do that. They just throw a little seeds out there. Like, we know what you're doing. You just put it out there a little bit. Because one day you're going to get caught. And they're going to come back to a video that's made on... Uh, or they gonna come back to these interviews and they gonna see your cocky responses, man. Like, if these videos are used in court, as far as just showing like evidence and and, and, and track record, man, this is this ain't good. Please. He stumbled into my please, house. Please, please. It's no, okay. It's gonna be fine. Okay, cool. Let me just please let me finish. Okay. Diddy admitted that the locks were a little quote kinky, although there might be another word for it. Maybe Diddy intended this as a joke, but considering everything that's been reported about his parties as of late, this answer comes off as brutally honest. Um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Fills up a night full of sweat. <laughs> that just sounds disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> Depends on the way you look at it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest yeah. videos. Yeah, man, I don't know, bruh. Diddy stuff not looking good, bro. It's not looking good for you. You know, you got a lot of accusers. And I'm going to be real. I don't think all these accusers are honestly, like, 100% telling the truth. 
what I do think is you he has a dark past or a dark life that we don't know about. And it may not have always been um, non-consensual, but it's probably enough non-consensual situations that take place for the consensual ones to say they are now non-consensual. If y'all, you know, you feel what I'm saying. And uh, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't feel bad for him. You know, if you did it, if you did it to one, and nine other ones blame you for it, I don't feel bad for you because you shouldn't have did it to the one in the first place. And that's just the way uh, life works. That's the way karma works out. You know, karma doesn't have any type of uh, scale to it. It can hit you back in, in, in the hardest way. It can hit you back in the lightest way. <clears throat> you know. So um, yeah. You know, prayers out to all the uh, the accusers, anybody, any, any victims, anything like that. And, um, you know, prayers out to Diddy, you know, maybe, you know, he goes to jail, prison, get whatever type of uh, therapy he needs to maybe, you know, one day come home a better man. And if he's spending the rest of his, his life in uh, prison, that's just is what it is, man, you know. You do the crime, you got to do the time. But like I said, before I get out of here, make sure y'all click like, subscribe, and I'll be back with another video. Uh, real soon. Peace.